It's been 20 years since Static Shock first aired. Yes, dear viewers, 20 years. Meaning, I was technically around when this show first came out. Now, now, I know what you're thinking. Aren't you a little old to be reviewing a children's cartoon? To which I would reply, Ah, uh, um, what? Well, I know the second thing you're thinking. How old is this guy? Well, I- Static Shock is always brought up whenever we're talking about black cartoons from the late 90s and early 2000s. It goes, Proud Family, Class of 3000, Static Shock, in that order. The thing is though, and this is a genuine question, what do we really have at hand to say about Static Shock besides the fact that it existed? Compared to, say, its predecessor, Batman, the animated series, or Teen Titans, which aired a couple years later, the particulars of Static Shock haven't quite stayed in the cultural consciousness. And yet, somehow, the show managed to persist in the minds of the young kids who grew up back then, myself included. Even now, well into my, uh, <coughs> early, uh, 20s. I still think about how rad it would be to see a static movie or a new show targeted at an older audience. Editor's note, the official on the run stance on all reboots, remakes, and sequels of properties that ended more than five years ago is, don't make them. Well, HBO Max recently released a show to stream, so naturally, I had to go back and relive that part of my childhood as soon as possible. And the fact that our subscription was ending imminently at the time is also probably a part of it. Now, I don't think I ever finished watching the show as a young pup. But now that I've seen it in its entirety, I must report to you all that I have thoughts. What are these thoughts, you may wonder? Well, stick around to find out. Virgil Hawkins High school student, smart as heck, funny, has the most loyal best friend anyone could want, but there's just one catch, he is secretly a superhero. A classic premise for a superhero story, our plot begins when the local chemical plant explodes during a clash between rival gangs. Those nearby gain superpowers as a result who then use their newfound talents for good or evil. Determined to not see his city fall at the hands of villains, Virgil decides to don the mask and become- y Yeah, you get it. Anyway, Virgil is about as complex as most Saturday morning cartoon protagonists. But more importantly, he was probably the first black superhero a lot of kids saw on TV. And he was the leading man. This is why so many folks remember this show so well. It was one of the only shows airing at that time where the cast looked like them. And that meant a lot to the kids growing up in that time. Because even today, those kinds of animated shows can be a much appreciated rarity. And speaking of animation, for an early 2000s show, the animation quality was pretty dang good actually. It takes a minute to find its stride, but at its best, these sequences can rival those of its predecessor, Batman. This is especially apparent in the later seasons. That said, the animation for season 1 of the show was quite bare bones. Then again, it's rare for shows just starting out to give big budgets to non-tentpole episodes. Plus, I'm pretty sure kids weren't too focused on whether a scene was animated on 2s or on 3s anyway. What they would notice, however, are redesigns. In Season 3, all our main characters received new looks and designs, and while it may have been jarring at first, they turned out to be pretty darn cool. Virgil gets a refreshing new superhero fit and casual fit, while Richie, Frida, and Daisy all get new looks as well. Heck, Frida's new design was so different that I almost didn't recognize her. Like, I mean, 
Look at the difference here. I couldn't have been the only one who thought this. Almost makes you wonder. Maybe. Just maybe. They, like, I don't know. Replaced Frida with a double that looks almost like her? Ever thought about that? Ever think about someone in your life? You may not have seen them for a while and when you see them again they look different? Almost like they're not the same? But you can't pinpoint precisely why? On the subject of new designs, isn't it wild how there was one season 3 episode where the characters' designs revert to their season 1 versions? That stuck out like a sore thumb. Crikey. The music for the show did its job. It captured a lot of late 90s, early aughts, black culture with its urban hip-hop and R&B inspirations. Even in more serious moments, the music maintains its cultural roots without seeming out of place. Each season also had a different opening theme song of its own, which kept Cut things fre fre fresh. I may sound like I'm cool on a lot of this show's qualities. Good, but not great. Okay, but not fantastic. But to be honest, Static Shock was actually fresh in a lot of ways. Static was one of those rare cartoon characters who was actualized and steeped in reality despite his superhero hijinks. He was dealing with problems and issues that the young people of that era faced every day. This show dealt with some heavy themes, really heavy. Loss, isolation, bullying, hazing, even living with a disability, which meant a lot to me personally. And it tackled these with relative grace and eloquence for an early 2000s children's cartoon. The very first episode informs the audience that Virgil's mom died from gang violence. So clearly this is going to be a theme that continues in this show. And it does. In the season 2 finale, the episode tells the story of a kid named Jimmy suffering from depression due to bullying. Eventually, he's pushed to the edge and brings an actual gun to school ready to take him out if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Home slice. Dig. Jimmy doesn't finish the job, of course, but clearly this episode was a PSA of sorts on gun violence. Columbine was, after all, relatively recent and still in the minds of many viewers. Nevertheless, I was struck that they were able to put a gun in a kid's show in such a dramatic and real way. They were really trying to portray what that sort of power means in order to elicit shock and get the message across to viewers. Well, despite the cheesy 90s cartoon sensibilities, it worked quite well. Further, this episode addresses grief and what that can look like in addition to healthy and unhealthy ways to process it. I cannot stress enough how important a lesson this is for young people to learn, and Static Shop handled it with unexpected grace for a superhero cartoon. Mid-season 4, we get an episode with Adam, one of the young heroes in the show, who is revealed to have dyslexia, and they demonstrate this in a pretty creative way. Early in the episode, Virgil and Richie are busy playing games at Adam's house. Adam leaves, and while he's gone, Virgil and Richie realize Adam doesn't have any books to read before the pair happen upon a stack of Adam's unopened superhero fan mail. Now, exactly how he received this mail despite having a secret identity? Uh. Now, I don't have dyslexia personally, so I can't speak on it, but I do have a disability. And I was pleasantly surprised because you don't see shows that portray people with disabilities often today, much less the early 2000s. It felt important to me, and hopefully to the countless other young viewers who watched this show as it was airing. 
Aside from its quite prescient PSA type episodes, Static Shock has some pretty inspiring messages and motifs, like how you don't need superpowers to make a difference. It's a simple message, but in this world, I think that it's easy to get caught up in all the news stories and the tragedies happening daily, and forget that we are allowed to make our own differences in our communities. It just works, and these lessons are delivered organically without feeling like you're being preached to. It just felt so pleasant watching it, you know? Revisiting it after so long, and when I open myself up to the show and what they're saying, I realized that I can make a difference because sometimes that little thing within your power is all you need to do, you know? After rewatching the show in its entirety, I have to be honest here. Static Shot was just okay. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't a great show by any means, but it wasn't precisely a trendsetter in animated superhero shows. It was also admittedly carrying on many of the traditions of these Saturday morning action cartoons like Captain Planet, like the diverse cast or the PSA episodes. However, Static Shot was able to fill a void that the creators saw in the cartoon landscape at the time. In my evaluation, this is why people remember the show so fondly. Most people when recalling Static Shot can't really tell you whether the show's writing was good or whether the animation was solid, but it doesn't matter. What they're remembering are the themes they could relate to that other shows weren't covering. The show dealt with sensitive topics that weren't often broached in children's animation and audiences resonated with that. And the ability to see yourself in a cartoon as a smart, gifted, cool black character with all the anxieties you had at that young age well, it meant a lot to us, and it still does. But anyway, that's all I've got. What do you think? Did you agree with me? Do you disagree? Was I completely off the mark? If so, why? Let me know down below in the comments. And until next time, we're on the run. It's just that sometimes I wish there was a black superhero back home for folks to look up to. Oh, but there is. And he is my hero too.